So today I'm going to show you how God put the process of the gospel in the tabernacle and how he further went from the process to the procedure he would use to bring it about. Now, Israel did not recognize this. Um, they simply followed the way God told them to go. Uh, and so Israel followed the tabernacle worship pattern, and only the priest would have the opportunity, the high priest would have the opportunity to go in and meet at the mercy seat and the ark under the cherubs with God. But all of that was changing when Jesus came, but God put it there for them to see, and they couldn't see it. Because all they could see was uh, God's acts. They didn't know His ways. They could see what He was doing and how He did it, but they didn't know the way He did it. But God put it right in the tabernacle. What a tremendous God. So I'm going to preach to you this morning on process and procedure. I don't know how far into this I will get. It may take me two weeks to get through it, but this is going to be a revelation to you as you uh, understand the process that God was leading Israel into His presence. Now, why am I preaching on this before I go forward? <laughs> I'm preaching on this and sharing this with you because I'm trying to teach you how to pray. That's what I'm trying to teach you. <clears throat> Most prayers consist of, God, help me. God, I've got a problem. God, my wife ain't doing right. God, my children ain't doing Help me, God. God, show me how to do so and so. God, I need... I don't know, that, that sounds familiar. You don't have to raise your hand. Your prayer life consists with you instructing God about what it is you see as the major needs in your life. No problem with that. No problem with that. That's a part of prayer. As a matter of fact, when we get into the actual uh, process of prayer in the presence of God, I'll show you how all of that plays into the prayer life. Because what good does it do to have a God if we can't go to God and share the needs that we have? So that's a part. Okay, that's a part, but it is not the part. And where people fall off the train in prayer is, is they make that the sum total of their prayer process. So I'm trying to teach you how to pray. Now... As I went through all of the processes last week, I'm not going to do that this week. But I want to start here with process and procedure. And let's stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 30 says these words. And you shall set the showbread on the table before me always. Father, we thank you today for your word. I pray that you will sanctify us to preach, sanctify our hearts to hear. Open our eyes that we may see and our ears that we may hear and our heart that we may understand so that we may apply the Word of God to our lives. Father, the application of the Word of God is the critical content, not the knowledge of it, but the application of it. So, Father, I pray that you would not only give us knowledge, but give us the ability to use judgment out of the seven spirits of God to apply to our lives what we need. Now, Father, I pray that you will bless, that you will keep. I pray that your word will go and hit the mark. Holy Spirit, we surrender to you today. 
to minister to your people in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. There's a most interesting reason why this piece of scripture is so important to the God who resides in the Holy of Holies. Because the Bible says that he looks over the showbread and he wants it before him always. And I'm going to see, show you why that's so critical. Because in the procedure, the showbread plays a crucial role. In the process, on the other hand, that's another issue from the lampstand. It shed lights on how God looks upon the divine plan of redemption. That one scripture, Exodus 25 and 30, sheds light about how God looks upon the whole plan of redemption. Let's look at the process first. In order to do that, we have to go back to the lampstand. Because as I have awakened in the middle of the night, um, gone to prayer and started through the tabernacle prayer in the middle of the night, God has begun to show things about the tabernacle, the holy place, that is quite astounding. The lampstand was placed to the left of the entrance to the tabernacle. It was set there with a great many indicators that were most important for the priest and also for us. The divine triangle made up the lampstand on the left, the table of showbread on the right, and the altar of incense at the head just under the work towards the Holy of Holies. It's a divine triangle because it is set there for three purposes. The first purpose is the process. Now I want you to see this because God put the entire process and plan of the redemption of man in the holy place. He put it there in the lampstand. Let's look. Number one. How do we see the process of God in the lampstand? First of all, it's made of pure gold that shows of the complete perfection of the Godhead. Do you know what that means? That when God made the plan for the redemption of man, it came from the perfection of who He was. In other words, it had no chance to fail. When God made the plan for you to come through Jesus Christ, it had no chance to fail. Now the reality of the situation is, is that in Adam, it appeared that God failed. That was the appearance for all to see, that God had placed a man in the garden, that God had surrounded him with everything he needed, and that Satan came in, and God had failed because man had been deceived. Well, we know that's not true. Because God did not fail, Adam failed. And we know that immediately upon Adam's failing, God went looking for the man and said, Adam, where art thou? And what have you done? Adam begins to blame the woman who God gave him. Immediately that tells us that God did not fail. Because the man had a scapegoat. Her name was Eve. God turns right around shortly thereafter and begins to share what is now coming. The divine plan of God. From the pure and complete thought process of God. Had Adam been able to do it and follow the rules, he would have created a planet of men just like him. Who would have been in the image of God, who would have had the dominion of God, the authority of God, the power of God. God did not fail. Adam fell and had a scapegoat. 
But God instantaneously began the process because He was the complete perfection of the thought process of the divine plan of God. That's what that lampstand shows you. That lampstand shows you the complete purity of God. It's made out of one piece. It shows you that everything in God has no imperfection. It is pure. Everything has been burned out of it. So first of all, when we look at it from the, the uh, bottom up, we see the lampstand itself as being the perfection of God. The lampstand is construction constructed of one piece that is formed into the specific shape of a lampstand which explains the divine process as it relates to heaven's perspective of the work of the three distinct persons. They work as one. God's divine plan did not leave out the Son nor the Holy Spirit. Jesus had an office. The Father had an office and the Holy Spirit had an office. And we have but one Lord, one God. We have a complete oneness between the three. They all do something different. It's in the lampstand. It's right there. The members of the Godhead working as one to accomplish the divine plan. For if there had been no Godhead, there would have been no Father. If there had been no Father, there would have been no Son. If there had been no Father, there would have been no Savior. If there had been no Savior, there would have been no Holy Spirit to sustain, lead, guide, and direct Him all the way to Calvary so that He could die. The three working together as one to accomplish the divine plan of God. The lampstand shows us that. As we move up, we see the almond cups. The almond cups that define that God will perform His Word and do so quickly. How much more quickly can you do your Word than to have man fall and turn right around and start looking for Him? And then to turn right around and create the prophecy that would bring Jesus Christ into the world through the seed of a woman. How much more quickly can you perform your word than to have sin become the destructive factor that would destroy the earth by the prince of the power of the air and to immediately interject the answer to the problem? How much more quickly can you act? The almond cup showed that God <coughs> is doing what He does and performing it speedily. Then we look at the seven cups. Those seven cups represent the seven spirits of God. Had you been able to listen to the radio broadcast this morning, you would find out that that is what the devil was after. He was after man's seven spirits of God because it was by those things that man would design, that man would author, that man would build, that man would think, that man would become all of those seven spirits of God and make you who you are. They're either fallen or they are redeemed. But when Adam fell, your seven spirits of God, wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, the fear of the Lord, and judgment went into a fallen state where your wisdom began to be consumed upon your own lust. So everything that the sinner does is about that terrible place. It's called Me County. We have a capital in Me County. It's I. It's all about me. 
So when man fell, his seven spirits of God fell into lust, the pride of life, the pride and arrogance of himself, and man in his fallen spirit began to devise ways to satisfy himself. But those spirits were never designed to operate in that way. They were fallen, so they were going to accomplish what they were designed to accomplish, but they were designed to be in you the same way they were in Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord rested upon him, the Spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, judgment, and the fear of the Lord, so that he would stand up one day in Luke chapter 4 and say, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor, to set the captive free, to heal the blinded eye, so that you can have liberty and live in the jubilee of God. That's what those spirits are designed to do. So when we look at the lampstand, we see the seven spirits of God. Those are around the throne right now to this day. In their godly, heavenly perspective, they're around the throne. And in you, they live in you if you're saved in a redeemed state. Now you and me, we don't always get it that the wisdom of God, the comprehension of, of understanding, has given us a divine favor that will set us up to accomplish whatever we want to accomplish. See, you have wisdom in you that you never tap into. You have divine understanding in you that you never get into. Why? Because you don't know it's there. You just live from day to day and moment to moment. There are a lot of songs about that, aren't there? A lot of people that have said that I, I just live from day to day. Makes a pretty little tune, don't it? Lie! That is not how God designed you to live. From moment to moment and day to day, God did not design His seven spirits of God, the wisdom, comprehension, counsel, might, good judgment, fear of the Lord, to operate on a moment to moment as just getting along. I'm just on my next, if I can make one more step. Just God designed the wisdom of God, let me prove it to you, so that you you would have dominion everywhere you went and every step you took in everything. That's what Adam had. It's given to you. It's yours, but we don't understand it because we bought into the lie. The lie is God will do it. I used to have a woman work with me and she, she would say, God will take care of it. Don't you worry about anything. God will take care of it. I don't care what people do. God will take care of it. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ did not say that. Jesus Christ said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And therefore, when it comes to the gospel... I'll take care of it. When it comes to the blind, I'll take care of it. When it comes to the necessity of liberty, I'll take care of it. Because the Spirit of the Lord rests upon me. The power of Almighty God rests upon me. And my life is full of power, dominion, and authority. I'll take care of it. See, that's what the Spirit of God is for. That's how Adam used it. Adam took wisdom and made every living being. That's pretty smart. He didn't just wake up one morning. Actually, he so astounded God that God stood back and the wisdom he used to do it, God looked at it and was amazed with it. How he did that? By his wisdom that God gave him. 
God was pleased that Adam could live in the wisdom of God. God was pleased that Adam had comprehension. God was not pleased that Adam gave it away. God was not pleased that Adam gave it away. But Adam did. So here we stand, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And we do not understand that the same thing that Jesus used to live the pure, and perfect, obedient life before His Father is in you, living in you. You have the judgment from heaven's perspective. Huh? You have the ability to fear evil from heaven's perspective. And it was right there in the lampstand. And we never recognized it. No, we just live from day to day. I don't worry or life's troubles. For its skies may turn to gray. See there? It's a pretty song. But it ain't biblical. It ain't scriptural. And the reality of it does not exemplify a redeemed spirit. You see it? If you don't, you can't miss it. I don't worry for the future. Because I know what Jesus said. What? What did he say? He said, the Spirit of the Lord rests upon me. The Spirit of liberty rests upon me. The Spirit to set the captive free rests upon me. The Spirit to give you the life of jubilee rests. That's what Jesus said. He didn't say that you were supposed to walk under the storms and trials of life until they beat you down moment by moment. No, 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 no. Because when he walked into the storms of life, let me tell you what he said to them. Peace, be still. And they did. Huh? He did that because he walked and lived in the redeemed heaven's point of view perspective of the seven spirits of God. And they were right in the lampstand. And we didn't know it. Whew. I'm going to sing a new song. You know what my new song is? I am wise. By love divine, I am knowledgeable for Jesus is mine. I understand everything I need to know because I know that Jesus is mine. That's the song I'm going to sing. Because as long as I know him and he knows me, my spirit man is redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and I can live and walk in all of its power and all of its authority. Yes, sir. All righty now. See, we, we just got to three or four of them things. We, and we ain't even started down yet. These spirits are housed. By the budding almonds, which tells us that God will perform His word. These cups represented God's choice of Aaron as the high priest. These cups represent God's choice of you. He chose you. You know why He chose you? He chose you because He first loved you. He chose you because whenever you came by grace through faith to Him, what He did for you was to say that your spirit man by your choice is renewed. And God will then begin to do what it is that He will do and do it quickly. Number five, the oil of praise. Now, watch all this. How can you not but praise God? When you know all of a sudden that you're redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. How can you not but praise Him? 
How can you not but look to him? How can you not stand back and lift your hands whenever you recognize and realize that you are full of the wisdom of heaven, that you are full of the understanding of glory, that the counsel of God resides in you, the very might of God lives on the inside of you, the knowledge of the truth belongs to you, and you fear no evil, and your decision making is of a heavenly or how can you not lift your hands and say glory be to the God that made this plan how can you not the oil of praise that filled the cups are the ingredient now watch it now used to ignite the process from heaven's perspective now listen to what I just said I have told you the seven spirits of God belong to you in a redeemed form. I have also just told you how to activate the seven spirits of God. I have also just told you how in the lampstand that God showed you how to activate your seven spirits. Well, say it again, preacher. I'm going to say it twice. The oil of praise and worship fills the cup and are the ingredient used for igniting the process from heaven's perspective. The oil of praise and worship. Someone said it gets old. We come in here sometimes and I don't feel like it. I don't feel good. And I sometimes, I may not just be into the music. Well, if you ain't into the music, are you into God? Because the music don't make no difference. The only thing that makes a difference is are you here to worship and praise the King of Kings and Lord of Lords because He has redeemed you and are you willing to worship Him if we never sang a song, if we never said a word, if we never prayed a prayer? Are you ready to worship the one who died so that you could live? That's the real question, friend. See, praise and worship ignites it. It ignites it. Benny Hinn says it creates the atmosphere for miracles. Years ago, I was down preaching in Georgia. There was a man there who was extremely wealthy. And he had been in the church for quite some time. I didn't know him very well, but I heard he was wealthy and probably the richest man in the area. So as I stood at the door greeting people, he kind of sidled up to me. I could tell he had something he wanted to tell me. So he pulled me off to the side. And this is what he said. He said, brother, I got to tell you what God did for me. I said, what did he do? He said, well, my business, my day job had a problem. And uh, nobody could solve the problem. And, and I had no dealings in the problem. I just heard there was a problem. He said, so I went to prayer. And I prayed about it. And I sought God over it. And I said, God... I need you to do, give me an idea about how to solve the problem for this company. Because if we don't solve this problem, I'm going to lose my job. The government is going to come in and shut this place down. And, and I, it, well, what are we going to do then, Lord? He said he prayed about it for a while. And one night he came in, prayed about it, and went to sleep. He said in the middle of the night, he had a dream. And the dream showed him specifics 
about what to do to solve the problem. He said he got out of bed the next morning. He scribbled down on some paper what the Holy Spirit had showed him at night. He took it in the next day and he said to one of his friends, you know, I believe God has given me an answer to save everybody in this county that works for this conglomerate company and maybe save our company, period. He began to work on it and work on it and he took it over to a lawyer and got it patented. Then he took it over to the business and said, here is your answer. They looked at it and said, my God, my God, how in the world could we have ever not realized how simple our answer was going to be? Paid him millions of dollars. He's a mom knows the man. He's a millionaire to this day. Owns business upon business upon business because the Holy Spirit dealt with him through the words of wisdom in the seven spirits of God to give him a knowledge about solving a problem that was essential in his life. Someone said, preacher, I never heard of such before. Well, she'll tell you. I could tell you the man's name. I could tell you the company he works for. Am I right? When the wisdom of God is sought, God will answer. God will answer. Your praise ignites it. He would go and pray, pray, seek God. Your praise will ignite it. That's what that cup stands for, the oil in that cup. Now let's look at the light of the world. Now whenever you understand that there is a God that is complete, that there is a three-in-one represented, that there are almond cups that show us that God is doing what He is doing and doing it quickly, that the oil of your own praise ignites something, and then... There is a light of the world, that there, is, yeah, there is praise, there is a light of the world that comes out of your burning praise. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is given to mankind. God has shown you from the bottom up of the lampstand, look at it, the light of the world is found burning from the praises of heaven. Did you hear us sing that song? That's one of my favorite songs. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne will crown. Who's singing that? We'll crown him now with many crowns. He reigns victorious. Who's singing that? Do you know where that song came from? It came from the praise from heaven's perspective. High and lifted up, Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven was crucified. Worthy is the Lamb. That's heaven. That's heaven singing. That's what's going on in heaven. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. <laughs> Holy is the Lamb. Holy. Worthy. Worthy. Holy. That's heaven's perspective. When they look at Him, they see Him as the worthy, holy Lamb of God that was slain for the sins of the world and seated at the right hand of God ever to be the high priest over His own sacrifice. Yes, sir. Worthy is the Lamb Seated on the throne, we'll crown him now with many crowns. He reigns victorious, high and lifted up. Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven, crucified, 
Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. He's not only the light of the world, my friend. He is the light of the eternal city of God. He is so lit in glory that there is no need of any other light in that city. Glory be to God. And God showed you that in the lampstand. Hallelujah. Stand up and let's praise him a minute. Father, thank you for Jesus. Glory. Glory to the Son of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. You are worthy. Worthy of our praise. Worthy of our joy. Worthy of our worship today. Praise your mighty and wonderful name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise and sit down. Here we are, the fire is sent to establish the spiritual means. Now watch this because I'm going to close with this. I'm only going from the bottom to the top this week. Next week I'll go from the top to the bottom. Then I'll go on over there and show you how he did it. So here we are. (laughs) The fire is now sent. See there's a burning light. The fire is sent to establish the spiritual means for heaven to communicate with the spirit of the man for the purpose of showing the man the Father who is the foundation of the lampstand. You see, church, God showed it to us. He showed it to us in His perfection. He showed it to us in it being all in one piece, three in one. He showed it to us by performing His Word quickly. He showed it to us by showing us the seven spirits of God that would change and rule our life if we would allow it to do so. He showed it to us by giving us the ability to praise and worship to ignite the seven spirits of God in our lives so that the seven spirits of God could give us the same platform Jesus had to speak to the world and that was poor about the gospel and say, here it is. Now you can be rich in me because you'll be included in my divine kingdom and you'll have dominion and authority when you get there. When does that begin, preacher? Well, the Bible tells us that by grace you're saved through faith and that you having accepted the eternal life that's in Christ Jesus, according to John chapter 3, you are condemned no more. So your eternal life begins the moment you believe. And then the Holy Spirit The fire sent to establish the spirit means for you to have heaven's communication. Your spirit man, your seven spirits of God are now designed, led, orchestrated to insights, concepts, and ideas that only come from heaven's perspective. Can you believe that? Can you hear that? Your insight into situations in your life. The concepts that you need to live the life of being more than an overcomer. The ideas that will transport you from one place, whatever that place may be, to another place, whatever that place may be, are given to you by the means of the Holy Spirit working in your seven spirits of God. I just wrote a book. That book has over 300 pages. In that book, it defines and describes Jesus Christ in His ten revelations. Friend, I ain't got that ability. Now, if you ask me how to block or how to tackle 
or how to throw a ball or even how to teach a kid how, who doesn't understand mathematics. Or you ask me something about teaching somebody to do something. I can do that. I told my son I was writing a book. He said, when in the world did you ever think you could write a book? I said, I didn't. The Holy Ghost thought I could. I would sit down to write that book. And I'm here to tell you my two fingers would move so fast I'd have to say, can you slow down just a little bit? I can't keep up. Sometimes the spelling was atrocious, but glory to God, the gist of what the Spirit of God was saying through me in that book became so apparent. Concepts, insights, and ideas that will transform your life come from the fire in the lampstand. Bow your heads and close your eyes. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Someone said, now what are you going to do if that book doesn't do nothing? I don't care. Ain't my book. Ain't my book. I ain't, I ain't got the ability to write that book. That's a Holy Ghost book. He'll take it and do with it what he won't do with it. Ain't my book. The title of it tells you it ain't my book. You know what the title is? I surrender. Ain't my book. I surrender the book to the Holy Spirit. I didn't write it. I don't have the cognitive abilities to do so, nor the typing skills to do so. But I surrendered it to Him. Today I want to tell you, that there is a Spirit of God that is waiting, that has been given to you as the process, the process that you have to go through to be able to expand, to be able to ignite, to be able to live in The plan that God has unveiled for your life. Can't get there without it. Can't get there unless you understand it. Can't get there unless you come through it. How do I know that? Because Jesus didn't get there any other way. That's why I know it's so. Isaiah told us about it. And Jesus turned around and told us in Luke 4 and 6, 4 and 18, 16 the same thing. Can't get there. We're seeking it out, but we can't get there unless we come through the way that God designed it to come. He showed it to you in the tabernacle. Now, here we are today. And the Holy Spirit is saying in my spirit today that what we need to do is we need to surrender. To the seven spirits of God. We've surrendered to Christ. We're saved. But we've never surrendered to the seven spirits of God. Wisdom. Understanding. Counsel. Might. Knowledge. The fear of the Lord and good judgment. And until we do that. And we come into that in praise and worship. We'll never be able to experience the things that are going to change your life. What are those things, preacher? I thought that was prayer and the Word. Those things change your life. The concepts, insights, and ideas, they're the things that change your life. Concepts about things you don't understand, insights about things you don't know, and ideas from those concepts and insights that transform your life. It may transform your personality. It may transform your home. It may transform your finances. It may transform your job. I don't know what it will transform. But there is a plan here. 
that God has laid forth for you. Now, while you pray, while you pray, I brought you to this position now, and now is the time to evaluate yourself. Are you living in the seven spirits of God, or are you just living from day to day? Are you functioning in a spiritual path that exemplifies wisdom? Your wisdom being such that people look at you and say, like Ted said about this little girl that sang this morning, she's old beyond her years. She has an ability beyond her years. See, that's a divine blessing of God now. That blessing for an unsaved, if you look at all of the great musicians, unsaved, they're using that as a fallen spirit. Have you used the blessings of God with intention in your life so that you can be what God called you to be? Now, while you pray, Here's what I want you to say. Lord, I repent of not knowing and understanding the seven spirits of God's impact upon my life. And today, as I stay, sit right here, I ask your forgiveness. I'm not asking you to forgive me because I'm not saved, because I am. I'm asking you to forgive me for living below what you called me to be. I'm asking you to forgive me for the times whenever I have cried out and wondered and even at times gotten mad with you because I didn't think you showed up at the right time. Forgive me. Because now I know that the seven spirits of God can be activated in me by my own praise. And I can have a wisdom that makes me ten times smarter than any man just like you did for Daniel. I can have a comprehension that goes beyond ten times greater than any man just like you did for Daniel and Jesus. I can have a counsel about me that goes ten times beyond anything I can imagine. Just like you did for Daniel and Jesus. I can have it. And today I repent of yesterday. But now I receive of your goodness today. Because now I see what you're trying to give me. I saw you give me salvation one day. I saw you give me a Savior. But I did not understand that when you gave me that Savior, that my worship and my praise could ignite in me the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost ignition in me could give me things that I have never dreamed of. Make me bigger, greater, stronger. Make me better. Make me a greater lover. Give me a better attitude. Give me all of the things that I've been expecting you to do for me. And they were in me all the time. <coughs> now if you prayed that prayer... I want you to stand up today and lift your hands towards heaven. And I want you to say, Lord, I receive it. I take it today. I will begin to live and look for concepts, insights, and ideas from the Holy Ghost that will change my person. That will change my lifestyle. That will change my attitude. That will change my finances. That will give me an opportunity to be at peace. Which means to prosper in this gospel. And prosper in this life. I take it today. It belongs to me. And it does. It's yours. Because Jesus had it. It's yours because Jesus included it in the gospel. Someone said, how did he do that? 
Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor. Why, preacher? So you ain't poor no more. We receive it, Father. We receive it, Father. We take it into our lives. It belongs to me. The gospel has made me prosperous. I ignite my spirits today because I stand to praise you. And so as I praise you today, I do the same thing that is done at the throne of God at this moment. Sing it with me. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. We'll crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious, high and lifted up. Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven, crucified. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. Raise your hands and praise Him. Worthy is the Lamb, seated on the throne. We'll crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious, high and lifted up. Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven, crucified. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Now I'm going to tell you what, church, there's an ignition on the inside of you, and it comes by your praise and worship. Now, I'm going to ask you one question, and I'm going to dismiss you. I'm just going to ask you one question. As my good brother say, I'm going to ask you one question. Just one. What you going to do now? What you going to do now? Huh? Because when you go out from here, all you have to do is get yourself in a posture of praise and worship instead of a posture of begging God. Go to praise. Go to worship. Don't beg. He's your Father. You don't have to beg. He's your Father. You have come through the blood. Get yourself in a posture of worship and praise. And as you worship and praise, you begin to tell the Lord, you're the Father and the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Surely, God, there is an answer for my attitude. I praise you, Father, because you are the God that created me. I worship you. Surely, there is an answer for my Father. And concepts, insights, and ideas from the seven spirits of God will begin to flow. Someone said, how long going to take, preacher? I don't know. Who cares? You worship God. You come out of there refreshed in the spirit of God. All of a sudden, you come out of there with the joy of the Lord being your strength. Oh, something's happening, brother. Huh? Something's happening, brother. You come out of there and your body, your mind, your spirit is renewed by the power of God till you feel like you can run through a troop and jump over a wall. The Holy Ghost is doing something that praise and worship has ignited. Let it ever be. Huh? 
Let it ever be, Charles McKee. Let it ever be. Father, I pray that you will bless our people and bring them back at the appointed hour. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.